Kohl's is the first store to release its Black Friday ad, posting this 64-page ad online this morning. Amazon's also kicking off the shopping season by offering Prime members more delivery options for free. Members will have the option to choose one-day and same-day delivery without a minimum purchase amount. This weekend, Target's uh, is putting on a hiring event across the country. It's looking for 130,000 seasonal workers. UPS also hiring thousands of seasonal employees on the spot today. UPS says more than a third of its seasonal package handlers in the past three years have moved on to permanent positions within the company. Right now, workers are in demand in all jobs. Now, if you're wondering, how do you go from that temp situation to a full-time job? Well, our job expert, Vicki Salemi, says, think of that first job as an audition for the one that you want. Produce impeccable work, have an incredible attitude. So that means go, arriving earlier, staying a little later, being super helpful, being positive in the in the office, being a problem solver, um, team oriented, and really make a lasting positive impression. She also says you should tell your boss that you're interested in becoming a permanent employee and ask what it would take to get there. A poll by Monster.com shows about a quarter of seasonal workers are hoping their seasonal gig becomes full time. There are some new concerns if artificial turf is safe. A former U.S. Women's National Team goalie is among those bringing up the possibility the fake grass is a cancer risk. The EPA is looking into the possible risks connected to turf fields. Well, Monday, we're going to show you what the research is showing so far and how turf makers are responding. Time to get those Saturday plans ready and the first weekend of November looking pretty good. It is going to be on the cool side here. Mostly cloudy skies, isolated shower or flurry in the morning. Then as we go into the afternoon, those temperatures in the 40s will add that chill to the air though with winds out of the west around 15 miles per hour. Next few days of your forecast, things should be dry here and we'll warm it up a little bit. Highs are back in the 50s by Monday. Thanks for joining us for the Now Indy. The news at 6 o'clock starts right now. This is RTV6 News at 6, working for you. I'm Nicole Griffin tonight in Morgan County talking to a local father who is concerned about the location of a proposed addiction treatment center. I'll tell you his concerns and have a response from the company coming up. A new plan to clean up the streets of downtown Indianapolis, what you'll soon notice or maybe not notice, and the overall goal here. It's been about sunshine today, but where we may see a brief wintry mix tomorrow. New information after a woman was found dead with a snake around her neck. We are learning more about how she died. The holidays are around the corner, and there's a need for letter carriers to deliver packages and mail. How you can land this job. I want to welcome you into the news at 6 o'clock here. I'm Mark Mullins. And I'm Amanda Starantino. We begin tonight with the RTV6 news feed. Colts wide receiver T.Y. Hilton is out for Sunday's game against the Pittsburgh Steelers. And the star wide receiver could be out for as long as three to four weeks. The team says he suffered a calf injury in practice this week. Sports director day first with a live report coming up in sports. Also, this just in Democratic presidential candidate Beto O'Rourke drops out of the running for president. The latest is coming up on World News Tonight with David Muir at 6.30. And if you're driving anywhere across central Indiana this weekend, listen up. Road crews will be working to try to get some last minute construction in before winter gets here. All lanes of I-465 northbound between 38th Street and 56th Street close at 10 tonight and will not reopen until 6 Monday morning. On Saturday, I-69 southbound from 116th Street to 82nd Street will be down to one lane and I-65 southbound and northbound will be down to one lane from I-465 to 30th Street all day Saturday and Sunday. A woman found dead with an eight-foot python wrapped around her neck died due to strangulation from the snake. That's according to a newly released autopsy report. 36-year-old Laura Hurst was found unresponsive Wednesday on the floor of a Benton County, Indiana house. Investigators say they found the snake around her neck. There were about 140 snakes in the house owned by the Benton County Sheriff. The Indiana Attorney General's office is appealing the decision to release a man convicted of killing IU student Jill Bierman. In September, a federal court ruled that John Myers received ineffective counsel. Bierman disappeared 19 years ago after leaving her home to go on a bike ride. Her remains were found three years later. 
Moving to weather now, it's a sunny and cool evening in central Indiana and temperatures will continue to drop as the night moves on. Kevin, how will we get this evening and what are you tracking for the weekend? A lot of people wondering that. There's some changes ahead. It's quite a change though. Sunny and cool this evening to snowy and windy and cold yesterday, oh, right? Yes. <laughs> 24 hours has made a big difference. Temperatures there in the mid 40s, well below average. We should be at 59 degrees this time of year. This 45 degree temperature in the metro area comes with much calmer winds. Temperatures 42 in Fort Wayne, 48 the warmest southwest Indiana in the middle here. Everybody within a degree or two of the mid 40s. Through the evening hours, generally clear. Temperatures fall off into the mid 30s by the time we get to 11 o'clock tonight. A good night for Friday night football. In the morning, we'll wake up with potentially a little rain snow mix from near Crawfordsville to Kokomo per, to Peru. I'll time that the rest of the day. See if it impacts your Saturday plans coming up. It's not good for our children. Um, it's not good for my child. It's not good for any resident. I've RTV6 is working for you, getting answers about a proposed addiction treatment center in Morgan County. People who live right next door to the property are worried about the impact it will have on their families. They tell RTV6's Nicole Griffin this location is not the right choice for the property. Skycam 6 shows the view from above this property that sits on 14 acres off Man Road in Mooresville. It's where addiction rehab centers wants to open a new residential treatment facility. I'm not against people getting help. I'm all for it. I would love something like this around here, but in a different area. Patients dealing with depression, anxiety, and substance abuse disorders would receive treatment at this location. Parents with children at North Madison Elementary, which is just over a mile away, are concerned. How is this going to affect the school? I mean, you can't say that there aren't going to be some issues and I'm just, you know, really concerned about my children at attend the school. I talked to the father who lives right here at this home directly next door to the proposed treatment facility, and he says he has a variety of concerns about this location, but he says one of the biggest ones is knowing that 10 strangers will be receiving treatment right next door to the yard where his children play. They have approximately 10 acres behind me with a pond that they planned on beautifying and uh, having their patients hang out on to rehabilitate. It's going to be difficult for me and my family to hang out in the backyard. The center made a request to the Morgan County Zoning Board to approve 16 residential beds, but was denied. The county's planning director says their hands are tied and they have to comply with the Fair Housing Act, which allows group homes in residential areas. The facility is allowed 10 beds. This belongs more downtown Mooresville, more downtown Martinsville, possibly. An addiction rehab center spokesman says they chose this location due to the lack of services in the area and the amount of drug poisonings in Morgan County. According to the latest stats from the state health department, 88 people have died between 2013 and 2017 in the county, and that is the 22nd highest county in the state. There are only two other treatment options in Mooresville and four in Martinsville, according to a state database. The Addiction Rehab Center spokesman says the facility is voluntary. They don't accept sex offenders, correctional referrals, and have a strong vetting process. He says he understands people's concerns, but hopes if it goes through, people will see the positive effect it will have on the community. Working for you in Morgan County, Nicole Griffin, RTV6. So what's next for this facility? Well, Addiction Rehab Center still has to acquire the property. Then they must have state-level agencies approve the use after upgrading Upgrading the septic system and demonstrating they can comply with fire codes. A Mooresville school spokesman says they are relying on county officials to thoroughly review the proposed facility and ensure it meets necessary safety standards our community expects. Dirty sidewalks, graffiti and litter, you could soon be seeing a lot less of it all as downtown Indy launches a new program to keep the streets clean. Megan Sinktorum found out how it works and why some say cleaning the mess is so vital to the future of the city. With bright yellow jackets and a broom in hand. These new street ambassadors are working to clean the downtown area one step at a time. We could see that the uh, city and downtown residents and workers deserve a much cleaner place. Hired by Downtown Indy, this team of six will address growing concerns about cleanliness and safety, especially in the wholesale district. It's important that we just provide our best foot and our best uh, hospitality moving forward. Leaders say with more and more people living downtown and an increase in panhandlers and people experiencing homelessness, something needed to be done. 
this is very important for downtown. Uh, we compete with other cities across the country for talent acquisition and economic development. So it's so important that our streets are clean, they're attractive. And just weeks after this team hit the streets, some are already noticing a difference. I think the, the last time we were down here a few months ago, we've uh, it was not uh, incredibly pleasant, but I've noticed that there's been a good improvement and it seems to me to be a, a cleaner, more like family friendly environment. This is just the first phase of the Street Ambassador program. The team will also receive hospitality training and work with IMPD to report any dangerous or inappropriate activity they find. This is a pilot program right now, but if successful, leaders say they will pursue additional funding to make this a permanent program. Working for you, Megan Sanctorum, RTV6. The street ambassadors were hired for these full-time roles through Healthy Veterans and Families. That's an organization that works to end homelessness. Working for you and getting results, water is no longer leaking onto a local road after a frustrated homeowner reached out to RTV6 for help. Citizens Energy has repaired both water leaks along Belmont Avenue on the southwest side. Samantha Newkirk said water had been leaking off of Belmont Avenue for about three months. She said she alerted citizens and the city several times, but no one had fixed the problem. RTV 6's Stephanie Wade looked into the issue last week, and now it's fixed. If you've driven on Indianapolis roads during the winter, you know how frustrating hitting a pothole can be. Democratic incumbent Mayor Joe Hogsett has proposed a regional infrastructure plan, which would take the growth of tax money from around Indianapolis and help the region's road issues. But but other local leaders have been very slow to come around to his idea, objecting to a system where they would pay more than they would receive. We went to all three Indianapolis mayoral candidates and asked them what they will do about potholes over the next four years if elected. We need to repair potholes the correct way. We need to do it in a more permanent fashion instead of a temporary patch because a temporary patch is, is again, it's only temporary. The mayor in his State of the City speech uh, pretty much demanded uh, that the cities just follow along in, in the counties outside Indianapolis. And that just doesn't work. Nearly 200,000 people get up every morning who do not live in Marion County. They drive into Marion County because that's where their jobs are. They derive income from Marion County. And when they drove, drive home at night, they take all of their local taxing, uh, uh, tax, uh, local tax uh, payments with them. Indianapolis voters will choose one of these three candidates on Election Day, which is November 5th. The holidays can be the worst time to be unemployed. But tonight we know of one industry that needs people now. What you need to know next in our Hiring Hoosiers report. Temperatures are going down, but the pressure is going up right now. Sectional semifinals, week 11 of Friday Football Frenzy. This is the place to be. Avon, Brownsburg, John Hart, live, coming up. And it will be a beautiful sunset. How will this view change, though, as we go through the weekend? Details straight ahead. This is RTV6 News at 6, working for you. Hiring Hoosiers is focused on connecting you to the jobs in the greatest demand in the state. There's a great need right now for letter carriers as the holiday season creates a need for the delivery of more mail and packages. Rafael Sanchez reports on the career that values people who especially work in the sun, rain, sleet, and snow. Anita Robinson begins her day sorting mail before hitting the road. Her route includes rural areas in Zionsville. A personality goes a long way. Communication, speaking, um, just compassion. She joined the Postal Service in June with the intentions of making this her career. We touch someone's mailbox every single day. And some people, we're the only person they see, you know, only person they talk to. Being involved paid off a couple of weeks ago when she spotted this house fire on her route and jumped into action to make sure the homeowner was okay. You are not a firefighter. <laughs> I know, but... You are a letter carrier. Yes. What are you doing? It's, it's just me. You know, when you see something, you have to respond to it. It may not be in my job description, but I did that at that moment. You know, you do it again? I would do it again. The Postal Service is in the middle of a hiring spree as the holiday season requires more people to meet the delivery demands. 
so a seasonal temporary job could lead to a long-term position, depending on your performance. The people that we have who come here and excel at it are categorically going to be people who show up when they're supposed to, who learn to do the trade very, very well. Anitra has found her purpose, delivering packages today, dreaming of being a postmaster tomorrow. Working for you in Zionsville, Rafael Sanchez, RTV6. Now, the Postal Service is currently looking for a number of seasonal jobs that range in pay from $16 to $17. The agency is also looking for rural letter carriers, assistant rural carriers, and a city carrier assistance. Rural carrier positions can make $18 to $19 an hour, and the city position is $17 to $29 an hour. We have a link to the Postal Service jobs on the RTV6 app and at HiringHoosiers.com. Over the next two weekends, kids in Hamilton County who need a winter coat can get one. Tomorrow, Hamilton County Kids Coats will give out coats to children in Carmel, Fishers, and Sheridan. All of the appointments have been taken, so these are the walk-in times at each location. In Carmel, you need to get to Carmel United Methodist Church no later than 1230 in the afternoon. In Fishers, coats will be given out at St. Louis de Montfort Catholic Church at 1130 a.m. And in Sheridan, go to Sheridan United Methodist Church at noon. You have to bring an ID showing you're a Hamilton County resident, and you must bring the person you are getting the coat for so you can pick out the correct size. Coats will be handed out in Noblesville and Westfield next week. And talking about warm coats, look at this this morning, 1879, the last time temperature dipped to 24 on this date. Uh, actually, it was in the 40s as well. I think we've tied the record on two occasions, today being the second one. As far as our temperature now, we made a nice recovery, didn't we, from 24 to 45. We've held steady here the last hour or so with uh, sunshine around. There have been a few more clouds for those of you in the northern third of the state. We'll see mostly cloudy skies during the day tomorrow. Mid 40s, but once the sun sets, and that's just a few minutes from now, we'll continue to see the temperatures fall off rather quickly. Off to the north and west, I show you this, generated by a cold front, a few sprinkles and flurries. We may see a little brief mix in the morning, and then isolated showers in northern Indiana tomorrow. Looking to the north, skies are clear. Temperatures at kickoff, we'll hear from Dave here in just a little bit. Big games tonight from the low 40s into the 30s as the games roll on through the evening hours. Not too windy, so if it does come down to a game-winning field goal attempt shouldn't be uh, influenced by that. 20% chance we'll see showers, especially in the afternoon hours tomorrow. Sunday, second half of the weekend, temperatures a handful of degrees warmer than what we expect during the day tomorrow, almost 50. 7 o'clock in the morning, Crawfordsville to Kokomo to Peru, this very thin line of some rain mixing with snow potentially. We roll that a couple hours out, 9 o'clock through Bloomington, Indy, and uh, Marion, and then by 11 off to the east. This is with a secondary cold front. Another cold front moves through, and during the afternoon hours, a couple of isolated showers possible to the north. Keep that in mind if you're headed to college games. I'll have a specific forecast for you in a second. Temperatures in the low 30s first thing in the morning, 42 by noon. A lot more cloud cover than what we've had today. The wind will be stronger as well. Wind will gust to 20 miles per hour through the afternoon hours tomorrow. 39 degree temperature at kickoff both uh, West Lafayette and up in the South Bend. Chance for showers a little higher during the game in South Bend, just but that's still pretty low, 20 to 30 percent. The night game down in Bloomington tomorrow night, 40 at kickoff. Sunday, more sunshine than we'll expect tomorrow. Temperature closer to 50 degrees. If you're looking for temperatures in the 50s, hang in there because once we get past Sunday, our three warm warmest days next week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Temperatures will be in the 50s before falling off again all the way back down into the lower 20s. Don't forget, set that clock back. Enjoy that extra hour of sleep. I'll do, it. I'll do it now. Do it right now? No, don't. <laughs> You're going to be way ready. Well, it's time for the RTV6 photo of the day, and take a look at this beautiful photo. Ryan Schleeman took this shot of the harvest moon there. You can see it shining over the silos and the farm field there. It never looks 250,000 miles away, does it? Full moon's <laughs> always no, a little no. closer. close, within grass. And the next full moon days away, November 12th is when we'll have the next full moon. Mark it down. Well, send us your photo of the day. You can email it to us at news at WRTV.com. Or you can use social media. Post your picture to the RTV6 Facebook page, Twitter, or Instagram and if as we, well. And Sorry, Mark. If we select your picture, we will air it here on the News at 6. Day first live at Brownsburg High School for Friday Football Frenzy tonight. Hey, Dave.
<laughs> uh, it is fresh out here. A little chilly. It's all good, though. We're live tonight. Brownsburg High School are taking on Avon. Sectional semis are on the line tonight. Week 11 of Friday Football Frenzy. John Hart is the uh, head coach here at Brownsburg. The Bulldogs have had a great season. Avon's had a great season. Unfortunately, someone's going to lose tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it really is. I think power rankings were one and two, and and they are the number one team in the state. They deserve it. They beat a lot of really good teams and uh, and stayed undefeated. Seven to three was the final, the first meeting you guys had in the regular season. That was a game, really, it could have gone either direction. It was that close. Could see the same thing here tonight, I think. Yeah, I think who scores in the red zone when they have those opportunities might be the difference in the ball game. Because uh, neither one of us did a very good job once we got to the red zone last last time we played. Tell me about your team a little bit. I think it's gotten better each and every week. Maybe we've taken a step back here or there. But the way this team has developed this season has been pretty special, I think. You know, we got really banged up early when we played St. X, and it was just a lot of fluke injuries. And they just kind of built and built and built. And we had the week off when we played HSC, and HSC played well. But Donnie Marcus didn't play in the ball game, and and, uh, and we had four turnovers. So we didn't. That wasn't our best foot. But I, I don't think it was also a game of uh, a major importance to us. With no seeding, right. six and three, seven right. and two is about the same record. You're looking. Looking at 300 wins in high school football right here, and you told me earlier, what does that mean? Not absolutely nothing. It means I, I've been doing it a long time, exactly. like, like this guy. Yeah, like, hey, have fun tonight, John Hart, head coach of Brownsburg. We got this game covered for you. These games as well. The winner here gets the winner between Pike and Zionsville. That's going to be a good one next week. Meanwhile, a couple in uh, sectional four and six A: Carmel, Hamilton, Southeastern, Fishers, and Westfield. Also, Warren Central, North Central. Man, that is a huge rematch in the mix. This one for sectional play. So on and so forth. Bunch of good games tonight. Scores and highlights tonight at 11 o'clock. Hey, to the Colts quickly. A story that broke this afternoon. Wide receiver T.Y. Hilton is out three to four weeks with a calf injury. At least that's the time frame that head coach Frank Reich is putting on things. T.Y. injured it in a non-contact drill Wednesday at the complex and it's not bad enough that he'll sit out Sunday's game in Pittsburgh. At least three more games after that. After practice today, Frank, on the receivers that need to step up, including the little use, Deion Kane. It's probable that Dion will be up, you know, get him back in the mix. So, you know, to take to take a spot from T.Y., you know, it's kind of by committee. We'll spread it around. I'm excited for these guys. I mean, I, I really am. I'm genuinely excited. And uh, we know T.Y. is T.Y. He'll, he'll heal as fast as anybody can possibly heal. And then we'll get him ready to go. What, what is weird about it? And from a calf to an ankle, the Patriots' Miles Turner listed as week to week after that ankle injury Wednesday in Brooklyn this morning. Nate McMillan saying that T.J. Leaf will get the start tonight against the Cavs. It'll be Leaf's second career start, second in as many seasons. That leaves the second group virtually untouched, so the guys off the bench should remain the same. See how it plays out tonight. Cavs and Pacers, 7 o'clock at the Fieldhouse. And finally, first and foremost, speaking of the NBA, Nuggets hosting the Pelicans. You can see this late last night. It's former Hamilton Southeastern star Gary Harris with the jam posterizing the former Dukey Jalil Okafor. Impressive stuff right there. Gary had nine points. Pell still won the game though. 122-107. Nuggets just a game out of first place in their division. Avon and Brownsburg in a rematch. Won by Avon earlier this season. The stakes are a little higher this time around. We'll see what happens tonight at 11 o'clock. Until then, the news six continues after this. Visit harrisreserpark.com for more information. I don't want to make this about me, but have you noticed, am I starting to show a little more wrinkles? So I, uh, yeah. a little bit. Uh, no, I didn't want to say something. something but... If I am, I'm going to look much better now. Oh, oh look at that. Look so at Millie. Cute. That's a Chinese Sharpay, and she is a beauty, and she's she sleeping. <laughs> she's wore out. Why don't your wrinkles look like that? 30. That's cute. Oh, they will. <laughs> At seven. <laughs>